Hello and good morning, everybody. Hey, this is Mark Graney. Mark, what are you doing, bud? How you doing? Doing fantastic, man. I'm so used to like a producer getting on there going, all right, okay, Arrow, you get to talk for like five minutes. <laughs> I, I got to tell you before we get started here that uh, kudos to Lauren. Uh, Lauren Jaggers has been, I, I first found out about this book months ago because she put this book on the radar and, and your, your promo team is just amazing. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so lucky. Uh, Lauren, who's actually a, a male. Um, which is oh. very well, yeah, no nobody knows that I have to tell them uh, Lauren Jagger is he's a he's a good Kentucky boy that's up in New York um, doing doing the good work of keeping getting the books together and the marketing team I'm just along for the ride I, at this <laughs> at this stage of the of the the book production process I'm I'm just a cog in the system who goes where I'm told and they do a really good job what is it like for you that now they're saying that the gray man series is now this this is where the universe begins in other words you you you're you're up there with with Marvel and and it's just amazing how you've just taken this on on its own little journey it is it's it is amazing and, and very surreal still I, when I wrote this book I had no aspirations uh, I was just trying to be a published author so I had no aspirations whatsoever of um, you know turning this into like a franchise or a series uh, anything like that I remember I the first book was a couple months away from coming out and the publisher asked me if I wanted to write two more in the series and I was like sure what are they going to be about and they're like we don't know you're the writer and I, I, I it was a serious question I was like oh okay um I was not looking that far I just wanted to hold a book with my hand you know in my hands with my name on it and so that has turned into something so so big a lot of it is just you know years and years of sweat equity and you know I, it wasn't a overnight success it d developed over time but um, you know, I'm I'm happy to be here along for the ride at this stage of uh, you know being a dozen books in. Well, as as a reader of the book, and I'll tell you when when I hold your books, I mean I, I can't do it in inside a Kindle. I've got to physically hold the book, and mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is that you guys do with the right pages or what, but there's a texture about your book that says, oh, this is definitely Mark's book. Well, that's good to hear. I I write a certain way. Um, I I joke that I make up my own grammar sometimes because I, <laughs> if, if I really want to um, highlight something in a paragraph, I'll put that on its own line and make it its own paragraph, even though it doesn't really make sense from, you know, what I learned in seventh grade grammar. Um, but they let me get away with it to, to a large extent because I just, you know, I, I'm always thinking about the reader's experience and I want them to, you know, really pick up on this thing here. Or I want them to feel this emotion. So, uh, you know, I think, if I have a style to my writing at all, it's it's that, that I'm really leaning into um, the reader's experience. Well, I'm glad you said that because I was a big fan of Mark Twain's 100th anniversary of his passing, his autobiography, and he, he says that very bluntly inside those pages. If you do not speak with your writing accent, you will not make it. And so you just told me that that's exactly what you do. Oh yeah, I I don't talk the way I write um, <laughs> to, to a large, and and I used to say that to my 94 year old aunt when there would be cuss words in my book. I'd be like, "That's just in the book. I'm just playing a character in the book," which was which was sort of true. I mean, which is mostly true. Let's say it was true-ish, um, and it's what she needed to hear. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, there is a different. You take on a different persona. Um, and, and I think that just comes from not even really training as a writer, but mm -hmm. from just reading a, a lot of books and and just sort of sometimes I'll be write something. I'll be writing something and I'll be like, oh, this sounds a little Tom Clancy. This sounds a little Gerald Seymour. Yeah. And I'm not trying to. It's just, you know, almost osmosis. You spent so much time reading that stuff. That That's so funny that you say that because, you know, you know, people will come up and they'll, they'll offer a compliment. And I go, don't compliment me. Compliment those before me because I am nothing but a chunk of them. They inspired me to do what it is. Yeah, absolutely. I I think of myself, and I, I always will as a as a reader. Mm. Um, I was a reader a lot longer than I've been a writer, and um, and so I I just think when people act like I'm anything special, I'm I'm going like, no, I'm just I'm just making up goofy stuff, and that I hope people like. And uh, you know, the the real heroes were the were the generation before me that that, that I really like, you know, vaunt. Um, but you know, I'm I'm just. A, a work a day blue collar guy trying to <laughs> trying to do this. <laughs> well, well, as that reader slash writer, it, it, do you chuckle when you realize that you know when you when you think of Russia, they're now the evil empire again. So now when you've got burner, it's like, oh yeah, people are going to dive into this. Yeah, you know, people ask me that, and I'm like, I'm the one that's been saying for 23 years that they're <laughs> the evil empire. <laughs> they they never went away, and and Putin has been doing Putin's 
things he's been he's been full on putin for a long time and so a lot of people are kind of like who could have seen this coming i honestly did not think they would do this in this level of the invasion i really did think there was going to be a lot of saber rattling um and not invade but once they did um i mean nothing has surprised me and you know last spring and summer when i was writing this book it's again it's not a military novel it's it's an espionage novel none of it takes place inside ukraine but that's kind of the backdrop for the story. And when I was writing it last year, I had to sort of think, well, where's the world going to be in February? And fortunately, well, unfortunately, I got it pretty much right that the war is still dragging on and the battle lines are about where I put them in the book. And, and the world's kind of relationship with the war is, is about how I envisioned it. Now, Mark, you've always been that guy, that hands on guy. Do you find yourself taking a small little trip over there just to get the experience of the atmosphere? I did not go to Ukraine just because the war, the war doesn't take place. Otherwise, I would. I have a, a good friend, who I, a guy I wrote a book with a few years ago called Red Metal about the Russian military. He's actually spent a ton of time in Ukraine and is supporting a battalion of foreign troops there now. Um, but I went to Italy and Switzerland and the island wow. of St. Lucia and New York, all these locations where the book takes place. Yep. And, and yes, that is I, I, I say that at my book signings and people kind of heckle me for going to all these really nice places. But the, some years, some books, I end up going to dicier locations. Uh, but but, you know, this year, the way the story is told, the way it unfolds, it goes to these pretty nice places. So, yeah, I, I went to all of them this year. I love that the, the way that you do that, because Julia Cameron from The Artist Way called that painting the room she says you got to put your truth on the page and so to me that when when i read that in your pages it's like okay it's because he's there he 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 experiences this yeah as much as i can you know every book is limited by the amount of time i have to write it um so i go as many places i can and do as much as i can actually for burner i was not planning on going to italy but i wrote this my largest action scene in any of my books it's an 80 page action scene 15% of the novel takes place on a four hour train ride between Milan and Geneva and I'd written the whole scene turned in the first draft of the book and I thought you know what I have to go over there and get on that train because it's not I don't feel like it's good enough yet so I went and did I went and did that and then rewrote the scene and I think it's better for it do you feel like Agatha Christie yeah, wasn't that kind of a train ride? Um, <laughs> it was, the, the people weren't as crazy. The people were more um, bloodthirsty killers for their Russian military intelligence and, and less, you know, fascinating <laughs> Agatha Christie ca- characters. So how how do you create inside your imagination the conspiracies? Because when Alex steals those records from from the Swiss bank, I mean, here we go. Hold on tight, guys. Wear that seatbelt. Yeah, I, you know, I I like building and as as I was writing this book, I was leaning more and more into the emotion of the story and honestly my outrage of of what Russia was doing and then the voices on the west that were trying to placate Russia and and they've been there for 20 something years. Um that's really what bugged me. And so every time I'd write a scene, I would lean into the emotions of of the characters and and their personal stakes in it and then i'd go back and and edit it and and honestly lay into it even more so it's it's a very kind of emotional story about people whose lives have been destroyed or, or uprooted and they're they're seeking a vengeance or retribution for what's happened do you envision the person's face because i mean I, i've studied dreams so much and they, they say that the people that we see in our dreams are people that we met along the way do you do you feel like that that's who you write about as well there's somebody along the way this journey you have met them and they're, they're now on that page Probably, but I have this weird thing, and it's really hard to explain, is I never see anybody's faces. I've never really? seen the gray man's face. I see everything else about him, and I sort of can see through his eyes and all this. But if if you, you know, like even now that the movies come out and Ryan Gosling is the gray man and he did a magnificent job, I don't see his face when I'm writing the book. I thought I'm, I thought maybe I would, but mm-hmm. uh, I don't. It's it's this sort of thing where you're just looking for a feel and you're looking for at the whole three-dimensional scene and even the even if just two characters are sitting in a bar talking, you you I'm thinking about how they look at each other when they look away, you know, it's all these other little things and it, and it's less about the physicality of like their faces. Do you feel like that you're a stream thinker and basically you're just receiving the story and you just happen to have your fingers on that on that keyboard? Uh, I wish that was the case. I I, <laughs> I I fantasize every year about next year's book is the one where everything is just going to I'm just going to go to work every morning with a grin going like all I have to do is write it down. But it's just this amorphous, sloppy process that's I mean, it's like making sausage and it's not until probably my second edit before I'm like, okay, I think this book actually might be okay. And I I do that 
my poor wife every year hears that the book is terrible for six months and then it's like well it might be turn out okay and then at the end when i did my final draft i'm like i'm really proud of it so uh, everybody just knows to to tune me out for about half a year so do you take your 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 blood pressure while you're while you're writing because mine mine every time i write it's, it seems like it always goes up well there's definitely i don't take my blood pressure that <laughs> maybe i should but there's definitely this like quickening pay like when you, when you know that things are going right when you're writing you you know your fingers just can't move fast enough and you're just trying to there's times where i will just leave out stuff because it's like i i'm i've got this thing and i've got to get as much of it down as possible yeah. and i can work with that um and i don't want to just sit there and work on all the nuances so you know writing definitely does speed up and, and boy does it slow down when it's not going well so i'm sure my blood pressure fluctuates well i mean because when it's inside your imagination and then when you start seeing that so basically you're putting down the ideas and then you come back to it you let it ferment a little bit and then you come back to it Absolutely. I mean, I, I think of every the, as a first coat of paint, you know, on a, on a chapter or on a scene or even on a, a pair on a line of dialogue. It, I put a first coat of paint on it. And it, as I go back to it, I, I make it better or refine it or sometimes just strike it and get rid of it altogether if, if it's not needed. So, um, you know, I think uh, people that want to be authors really need to learn that muscle of not getting stuck on a sentence or on a word or anything like that, just getting a flow down and then you've got something to work with and, and building from there. Well, speaking of working with things, so the, the, every book has to have the conflict. So court gentry and then, and he wants Alex, that to me is the conflict, but I mean, do you, do you giggle about it like a child when it's, when it's, when it's taking shape or is it one of those where you go, Oh my God, here we go. Let's, let's just push this thing forward. Yeah, with this book, it was very much just making it, just more cinematic and and more emotional yep. and uh you know the the i'm at this point in my career i'm i'm more fascinated with my secondary characters than i was earlier in my career they they're not just props or they're not just people to bounce off the the heroes i i write secondary characters with as much depth as i can you know without slowing the book down and keeping the story going and so alex valesky who is this uh ukrainian banker in switzerland I mean, he has incredible personal stakes in this, and he's 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 an incredibly bad guy who has to do something incredibly good for reasons that may be selfish, but you know are are, are for the common good. And I really wanted to put him on his own story arc, even though this is the only Alex Valesky book that I'll write. <laughs> I'd love to see the numbers between uh, you know the men and women because my my neighbor Paige, we we sit there and it's it's like we go to a little book club. I mean, oh, and, I'm, and, I'll, and I'll sit there and I'll go, wait a second, I'm talking to a woman about this book that really for guy, but no, I think it's for everybody. Yeah, and I early on in my career, I was surprised women liked the books and that wasn't me being sexist that was literally like me being self-effacing i'm like oh wow yeah, there's people other than me like this <laughs> and uh, and i think it's in the 30 percent 30 something percent females and and you know at the book signings it's i swear it's 50 percent female and uh, it's it's fantastic to see and i get you know really good positive emails and and older and younger people and and all that it's just it's just really cool to to be part of that community all right your next book because every time that you release a book you're you're a little bit closer to charlotte and they, they keep telling me hey go you want to you want to meet mark yeah 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 well he's going to be here when are you going to come to charlotte so i can so we can have a face to face well, I'll tell you what, Wednesday I'm flying into Charlotte, renting a car and driving to Raleigh for three hours See? <laughs> for, <laughs> for a book signing. So ships passing in the night. I, I'd love to go to Charlotte. It's one of my one of my real favorite towns in, in the country. Um, and so hopefully maybe next year they'll get me there. I have two books coming out next year, so maybe next year. Oh, we got to do it. We got to do it, dude. That'd be great. So what's the website? So people that, you know, that are just discovering you, because we have to think about those listeners as well. They're just discovering you. Where can they go to find out more? Well, first I'll say that if this book is a standalone novel. You don't have to read the others in the series. Cool. And then, uh, then my website is Mark Graney, G R E A N E Y, books dot com, and you can see everything about me there. I love it, man. Please come back to the show anytime in the future, Mark. You know the door is always going to be open for you. Good to talk to you, Errol. All right, man. You be brilliant today, okay? All right, thanks, man.